Welcome, and in this video, you're gonna learn a metal drummer hand technique. The specific technique in question is utilizing the wrist motion and the finger motion, or the French grip, in unison with each other. Maybe you've gotten to a point with your drumming where you find that the French grip itself isn't really good for control. It's nice at faster tempos. And then once you go through your toms to do a fill, you find that it's kind of weak and you can't really control the rebound off your stick. That's why I want to give you a couple exercises so you can practice transitioning from the palms down German grip to the thumb up French grip in your drumming. If you're not already familiar with the French grip and how to do it and what to practice, then I'll put a video up here that I previously made on the French grip and we go over a bunch of different stuff in that. So after this video is done, just click on the card up here and learn the French grip so you can incorporate that in today's lesson. Most often when you're trying to do some really delicate kind of stuff, the fulcrum is going to end up being between your first finger, your index finger and your thumb on the first crease of it, right? But oftentimes you find yourself tensing up and you're gripping the stick too hard. And that can pose some really bad concerns because once you start to speed up, you want to be really relaxed. When you're practicing the wrist technique, you want to make sure that your stick is going straight up and down, right? You don't want to be slicing it like this on an angle. What's going to happen is you're going to get a bad bounce and your stick is going to fly out. You don't want to slice your stick like this, okay? You want to bounce it straight up and down like a basketball. And that's using the wrist motion here. You've heard of lots of guys playing on pillows and stuff like that. I encourage you to do that just so you understand that you're not playing with the rebound quite yet, not until we introduce the French grip technique. So if you got a pillow at home, practice on a pillow too. All you're gonna wanna do is just bounce a stick up and down like that. You kinda want the stick just to stay taut on your fingers. You don't, you don't wanna death grip it like this, like you're choking the stick out, but you also don't want it to go like this. Right, so you wanna have control of that rebound. You just wanna take full force into your wrist just to work those muscle groups in your forearm. If you wanna speed it up, that's okay too. Again, you don't wanna slice the stick like this. You don't wanna come in diagonally like you're using a sword or something. You wanna bounce it straight up and down. And that goes for both hands. We're using primarily wrist here. We're not using any fingers other than to hold the stick in its place. So if you've already seen the French grip video, you'll understand that the first hit is going to give you a stroke that brings your stick up like this, and your fingers will be open like this. And when you draw your fingers back in, that'll give you the next hit. So that'll be playing on the rebound technically. So if it's exaggerated, it's gonna look, it's gonna look something like this, right? It's kind of like a push-pull thing but not entirely. We're just using the first rebound so that we can use the other strokes with our fingers. We start with the wrist and then continue using our fingers to control the rebound. Again, you gotta remember to keep your stick upright. You want it straight up and down. You don't wanna start slicing like this. You notice that your hand starts to open up. If you start slicing it, you can get a bad bounce and you can drop your stick. Another thing to keep in mind too is when you're practicing on your pad, you want to kind of have your sticks follow your arms inward, right? Because a lot of that, a lot of that is going to either be coming from your arm, your wrist, or your fingers. You want that stick to be able to take all the motion and the power in the stroke that you're providing with your limb. If you start having your stick out here, you're going to notice there's going to, you're going to feel it in your elbow. We want to prevent injuries. If practicing your technique correctly is really important because if you do it the wrong way, you'll end up hurting yourself. And you don't want to hurt yourself when you're doing something you love. So this is why technique is very important. Just wanted to let you know I put together a metal drumming practice guide. I'm going to link it down in the description below and pin it in the comments of this video. So if you're interested in getting that, you can download it instantly. It'll be sent right to you at no cost, completely free for the rest of your life. Just download it and make sure you save it to your cloud or your phone or your computer. And you can go back to that anytime. Let's get back to the lesson. So we understand the German grip and the French grip, but what are some exercises we can use to incorporate that into our playing so that we can switch back and forth? 
It's as simple as this, right? Lay your palms down and then open up your hand to put your thumb up. The important part here is to maintain a steady pulse with your hand. You don't want to transition between the two grips and then increase it. So my suggestion to you is to practice along with a metronome. Make sure you start slow. Don't, it's not a race. Don't try and speed it up. And the reason for that is we want to understand where any flaws might be in our technique. So if you follow along with me, we're going to be doing a bar of 16th notes with our palm facing down in the German grip. And then we're going to do a bar of 16th notes with our thumb up in the French grip position. Let's go. Just like that. Make sure you're following along. Try and get that transition nice and smooth. Remember, we're not slicing the stick either. It's important that you use your left hand in this exercise as well because that may be your weak hand like it is mine. So just for demonstration purposes, I was showing you with the right so you can see the proper technique in this camera down here. Now that we discussed the German to French grip technique, I want to discuss something else with you and that's your posture and how your arms are when you're playing and if you're relaxed and if your shoulders are tense and things like that. So basically, when we're playing here, we don't want to keep tension up here like this, right? We don't want to have invisible lat syndrome. We don't want to splay our arms like this. We want to draw them in here. We don't want to hold them in tight, right? Like we're trying to press our boobs together, but we also don't want them hanging out here. So with that in mind, shoulders relaxed, arms to the side. The motion is coming only from the wrist and only from the fingers. We're trying to isolate the two and then transition through both of them. So again, with relaxed shoulders, with our arms to our sides, here we go. All right, so that's all there is to it. I know it might sound simple, but if you go through your drum set, alternating between the German grip and the French grip, you'll find a noticeable difference, especially if you're coming out of a, dr a drum fill in German grip and then going into a blast beat with a French grip. Right, something like that. You're gonna find it a little easier as you're not gonna tense up and try and force something into your playing. And what's really important here is that we also play on the rebound with the French grip and we use kind of a little bit of molar, not so much. If you don't know what molar is, that's okay. There's lots of videos online properly explaining it, but just take the first motion from your wrist and then bounce that into your French grip, right? So especially when you're playing like a traditional blast on your ride, you kind of use that pumping motion in your wrist on the downbeat to accent your parts to kind of keep you in place. That is another way to keep yourself in line and to practice both techniques going forward. If there are any other techniques or any questions you might have about this or any problems that might come up when you're practicing this, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to answer you as promptly as I can. Thanks so much for watching this video. My name's Cam Flurry, and I'll see you in the next video.